Hey guys, what's up? I uh, Sectotron here from One Half Gazette, here with the next base destruction video. And this one is going to be interesting. I think there's going to be some good points. Uh, so I encourage you guys to stick with it to the end, because uh, a lot to learn from it. It's uh, from the uh, Clash United War that we had this weekend. And uh, we actually, after this one, we just got matched up with a farming clan, like full on troll bases with everything exposed. So you're going to see a lot of this war just because I won't have a whole lot else to show. And uh, that should be fun because this war had some great attacks and it's definitely going to get some good coverage over the next few days. So anyway, uh, let's get to this base destruction video. We have just two attackers uh, that we're looking at. So only two attacks to get this base three starred. And I've seen bases that have this kind of layout quite a bit where the air defenses are kind of in that uh, central and then like the three uh, in a little triangle around it um, like that. Uh, I just wanted to draw the Illuminati. Uh, you guys know what it is. Because I did that in a base destruction way back. So maybe you guys remember that or not. Anyway, uh, just jokes aside, honestly, though, this base, um, it's going to be attacked a way you wouldn't probably expect to see it hit. So the second attack is going to be very interesting. But the first attacker tries an HGHB. Um, and it, it, it might work from this for this base. It might not. Let's talk about why it didn't on this specific attack. He drops down two baby dragons to create the funnel. Probably could have done it a little bit cheaper. I think the baby dragons are only good when like there's an archer tower in the area. Because at the top there, you could have used some minions, especially higher up. Maybe not on that bottom uh, drill. But anyway, that's not the important point. The fact is he creates the funnel pretty well, actually. Um, the bowlers, though, and they're very difficult to funnel in. Um, the funnel was good, but the bowlers for some reason still go up north here, and uh, he just dropped them a little bit too high up, and it just goes to show how susceptible they are to walking around the base, because you would not expect them to walk, but they do. So I think half of his bowlers or so walk up, um, but he has all the usual stuff moving in. The, the giants come in like this with the healers, has a rage, um, has his heroes. Um, some of the bowlers do go into the base, but right here is where it matters, right here he doesn't have a jump so he's expecting them to beat through the wall here and keep moving through get to, towards the air defenses <clears throat> the expos that area of the base but look at the uh, compartments right here two buildings one building one building and the teslas are drawn in by the way in blue you can see the teslas um look at the those the compartments those are things the queen the bowlers all that stuff's going to take out very quickly so what happens is these kind of end up emptying out and because of that, there's a huge gap between that and the next building. And his troops actually go out and back around the base. At least most of them do. Some of the giants stay in. But the important troops, the DPS stuff, it actually leaves the base. Because sometimes small compartments can be deadly when you don't have that jump. Because everything stacks up on a wall. And the bowlers and the queen, which can shoot over walls, they could clear out compartments if they're that small. So what happens is... Uh, everything reroutes back around outside the base because the bowlers and the queen cleared out that compartment or those compartments, in this case, three of them. I think they clear out most of that. So anyway, uh, we'll take a look at the attack because uh, this that's pretty much it from there. Things walk around and kind of die off. You can't expect an HGHB to work when everything's on the outside of the base. So we'll take a look at it and then we'll move on to the next attack, which is a pretty uh, interesting take on this base. So here is the attack. It's done by Nate at the beginning here. Uh, you can see he goes ahead and uses the baby dragons, which get, you know, okay value. I guess the air defenses aren't that close, so that helps them stay up a little longer. But um, it's important to think that sometimes you can save the 10 troop space, do it for like 8 or 6 or something. But the, the main thing to watch is um, the uh, main the kill squad of the attack. So there go the giants. Goes ahead and drops a few. I, I don't know why he did that, but there goes the main group. Uh, wizards backing it all up. Everything is starting to move forward. Has the rage, just lets them beat through that wall, which is fine. Uh, but look at those bowlers. Look at them. They're going to go all the way up there because the wall wasn't opened, I guess. So you want that opening before you drop the bowlers. But the important thing is right here, um, poison for the CC troops, everything moving forward. Look at these bowlers. Take out the compartment, the queen also. Um, there's a few wizards in there. Right here, boom, everything but the CC is down. His heroes leave the base. All that's in there is a one bowler and a bunch of giants. So I guess the CC did stay up, but all the important stuff that the bowlers, the um, that most of his troops could reach, uh, especially at the bottom there, got cleared out. So everything goes around the base. So sometimes you might want to bring a jump 
because uh, I know typically you don't, but I've said this in my Clan War mini tips and stuff. Sometimes you need to bring that jump because uh, it, there's just it's, it's not a clear enough path. And no matter how well you created the, the funnel, your troops can and will go to the outside uh, if you clear out all the compartments right in front of them because they are not inclined to beat through two layers of walls to get to new buildings. So uh, definitely the king walks, the queen and some of the bowlers also walk too. So uh, right here, everything's uh, kind of going to get clumped up on this wall here. And the healers are still up. He still has his hogs. We'll go ahead and go times two because it, it gets down to 95%. But the main thing uh, to focus on was the beginning there, how just that, that little, uh, and I, I guess maybe for base building, that's something to keep in mind is having those small compartments can screw someone up if they don't have a jump. Because if the bowlers, the queen, clear it out before the giants smack through the wall, uh, their kill squad could go to the outside of the base and they could be in trouble. So anyway, you can see here HGHB is pretty powerful because even still, uh, it gets pretty deep into this base, gets 95% uh, before he runs out of time or the troops die or whatever. So anyway, uh, good try to Nate. The plan was good. Had things stayed inside the base, I think it would have been a three star uh, for the mo for pretty likely, but uh, just had that little mistake there or I guess got unlucky, whatever you want to call it, and uh, his troops went to the outside. So let's take a look at, let's take a look at another perspective on this base and how it got the three star. Okay, the attacker to get the three star is Anthony, and uh, he actually starts things off somewhat similar. Um, but just taking a look at this base real quick, th the first thing you wouldn't expect is an air attack on this, because look how far the queen technically is from those air defenses. Uh, you can see here, uh, I mean, a good solid a third of the way across the base uh, away from her. So typically you wouldn't expect an air attack, especially one that has a kill squad sent in to get both the queen and multiple air defenses, maybe a split hero attack. But this is a pretty uh, conventional, at least in the style of the, of you know, like what on what part of the base he deploys things. Uh, so I guess I'll get into the specifics here. Anthony goes ahead and drops down some giants. Uh, healers on them. So kind of an HGHB opener. Um, and he does have all those components except for the hogs. Um, so sends in the, the giants, the healers on them, uh, more baby dragons for the funnel, I believe. Uh, bowlers also. He makes sure the walls open, I think, which lets the bowlers go in because now they can target this. Um, whereas before they couldn't sh uh, reach over the wall there because it's two tiles. Uh, in between the archer tower and the wall. So they, they're able to go up and target that archer tower and enter the base. So it gets all the bowlers in there. Um, and he brings a jump. So it has that jump right there. Uh, nothing's going to you know leave the base. Everything keeps moving forward. And look at these three air defenses, how handy they are. One here, one here, one here. And yes, he is going a little deeper into the base, but he definitely has the means to do it with the giants, the healers, uh, the bowlers, the heroes. All that's going to be powerful enough to get into this base. And the thing is, the, the small compartments that hurt the first attacker, they're going to help uh, Anthony because they're going to keep all his troops from straying to one uh, one way or the other. So they're just going to sit in these kind of compartments right here, and they can target each one of these air defenses. At least the queen and the bowlers can. And I think the king can get this one at least along with the giants. So the small compartments, what warriors they hurt the first attacker, they're going to allow his troops to stay in the middle target those air defenses, get those down, and from there, just sends in two Lava Hounds and Balloons, doesn't even need any spells for them, just uses the spells on the Kill Squad, uh, because at this point, everything's really exposed on the space. This uh, Air Sweeper goes down, I believe, so just basically has one air defense and a few Archer Towers to deal with, uh, pretty much all of which can be targeted directly by Balloons, so everything goes down really quickly. Uh, awesome three-star to Anthony. We'll take a look at the attack, then we'll wrap this up. So here is Anthony's attack. Uh, you can see it actually only has one baby dragon. So he drops the other one for more troop space, which I think was a good idea. So there goes the first baby dragon. And at the top, I think maybe he just takes my advice and uses some wizards or some minions or something. Uh, but there go the giants, the healers. Pretty much the same thing as the last attack, a standard uh, HGHB, at least at the beginning. There go the bowlers. And I guess the wall wasn't opened up yet, but they he had time to get it done. They were distracted on that army camp. So by the time they're stepping forward, there's an opening for them to walk through. So that, that's all good. Has the uh, jump, like I said, that makes a big difference. I don't know why this guy had two baby dragons in the CC. It was kind of weird. Uh, but anyway, 
the Giants moving forward. And look at this, right here, they're already going to be able to target those for that first air defense. And from there, the next things for the bowlers, for the queen to target, uh, just one tile over the wall of those air defenses. So already has three of them down. At this point, things are getting kind of stuck on the wall, uh, running out of uh, HP, doesn't have any spells left. So this is the time to send in the air troops. Uh, like I said, he can target like almost all of those defenses directly, which is awesome for a balloon attack because they move so slowly. You want to get your balloons on those defenses as quickly as possible. Uh, the second Lava Hound, as soon as that one explodes, perfect timing, and uh, this base is finished. You can see it still has parts of the Kill Squad left up, as well as a Lava Hound and a solid six balloons or so. So just the Tesla and then a few defenses up there uh, crush this base. And like I said, you wouldn't expect this to be a base you'd hit with an air attack, or at least, like I said, coming at the queen, but also getting air defenses. But he makes it happen, and I think it goes to show how those small compartments, they can hurt you on an HGHB attack if uh, they get cleared out too early and your troops run around. So that's something to keep in mind when you're uh, planning an attack like that. You know, bring the jump if you need to, because you can't afford for your heroes to walk around the base um, even if the funnel is going to be pretty good. Um, but although that hurt uh, Nate in the first attack, um, the small compartments helped Anthony uh, keep everything together and target those air defenses. So it's just about looking at the base, uh, what you know each part of the base is susceptible to, and uh, he, Anthony does a great job utilizing that, seeing uh, how the jump is going to make the difference and let everything in there take out the air defenses and use the uh, lava hounds and balloons on the back side of the base. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sectatron out.